What's up everyone, welcome to Road Gear Reviews. I'm Tom from Morton's On The Move and today I'm taking a look at a piece of portable cooking equipment, the Ducks Top 1800 MC Induction Cooktop. So what this is, is basically a portable cooking surface. It's a single burner electric cooking device. What's great about this unit is it is an induction cooktop. And what that means is that the unit itself doesn't actually get hot. Instead of being a radiant heat source that this actually heats the pot that you're trying to cook food in, this actually creates a magnetic field that induces a current into the pot that you're trying to heat and the resistance of the magnetic material in the pot slows that current and causes it to heat up. So basically what it's doing is it is heating the pot indirectly without actually touching it at all. Induction cooktops, if you actually hover a pot over top of it and don't actually touch it, the pot will still heat up. A nice feature about that is you can never burn yourself or accidentally heat this surface. This surface will never get hot except for heat from the pan itself getting into it. So if you turn it on, it doesn't get hot. You can't burn yourself. You can't put anything on it that's actually gonna burn. And what's interesting about the induction is you can actually put paper towel down on this surface and then put your pot on top of it and that paper towel will not burn. For travelers and RVers, it's great to have a portable cooking surface like this in addition to your gas surfaces so that you can cook when you're hooked up to electricity. Because of its portability, you can take this just about anywhere you go, and as long as you have a 120 volt 15 amp receptacle, you can cook food anywhere you are. This unit's gonna work fine on generators, a portable generator, or even a inverter. If you have a, a solar system or an alternative source of power, you can still use this to cook. The benefit to cooking on electric over your gas is that a lot of times, especially if you're at a campground or something, the electricity is included in the cost of your stay, so you might as well save the money on propane and cook on electric instead. This is the unit that we've been using primarily for our electric cooking and it is actually our preferred way to cook. We will even use our generator a lot of times to run this when we're out in the middle of nowhere. It measures about 11 and 1 quarter inches wide by about 14 inches long and about 3.5 inches tall from the feet to the tallest point when it's sitting level. The unit is incredibly easy to operate. It basically has one big on off button once it's plugged in push that and it'll fire itself up. It's got plus and minus controls here that can adjust either the power, which if you're set on uh, the power setting here, it has settings one through 10, which uh, the documentation says is about 200 watts up to about 1800 watts of power. It also has a temperature setting. You can actually set the temperature that you want your pot to maintain. Uh, again, with the plus and minus controls, it'll read the temperature on the screen here and it will maintain that temperature of the pot, which is really great if you don't want something to boil or you want it to just barely boil, you can set the temperature you want it to hold at and it will maintain that temperature very nicely. The last setting is a timer. You can actually set a timer on this so you can set something to um, cook for a certain amount of time and automatically shut off. This unit has an automatic pan detection. When you turn it on, it's going to beep until you put something on it. It's actually not gonna turn on at all until you put a pan on it that is induction compatible. This does require induction compatible cookware, which means that it needs to have a ferrous base at least. So stainless steel cookware inherently is not gonna work with induction cooktops, but many of them these days are putting a magnetic bottom into them so that they can work on induction cooktops. The material has to be ferrous and contain some iron and therefore magnetic, so aluminum is not gonna work on this at all. This unit has a plastic base here that has the buttons and the displays on it, but the top portion that the pan actually sits on is a nice thick glass. It has the ring where your pot is supposed to set and it's supposed to be able to adjust to the pot size meaning it will only supply enough power to heat the right size pot that's on here. I've tested this out with a watt meter and I didn't really see a whole lot of difference in power and different size items but if you use a really small pot it's definitely not going to provide the whole 2000 watts into it. Uh, just the inherent design of an induction cooktop is going to do that. Because we are usually power constrained and we like to use this on our generator in the middle of nowhere and now a new solar system we have installed, 
we've taken a watt meter and taken a look at the actual power that this thing requires. The lowest settings stated is about 200 watts of power on this, but it doesn't actually work that way. On the low power settings, settings one and two, it actually clicks on and off, and the lowest power that I've seen it draw is around 1,000 watts. Once you set it at power level three, I noticed it was around 1,200 watts, and then as you temp that up all the way to power level 10, I've seen it get almost to 2,000 watts of power draw. When you first turn it on, it's normally set at power level five, which is kind of supposed to be in the middle, but I would say that's more of a medium high heat setting compared to a conventional electric or a gas range. That is something that took a little bit of time to get used to, was figuring out the power settings and how it cooks. Um, overall, on the high settings, this thing is way faster than gas or electric, in my opinion. The size of this thing is great, too. It really fits different size pots and pans really nicely. Uh, we've found that pretty much anything that's induction compatible uh, works really great with it, and it's so incredibly fast. Um, we used to use a electric kettle to heat water up, but this thing heats water so fast that we went to a portable collapsible tea kettle style unit that is induction compatible, and we fill this up with water and put it on here, and it can boil this entire thing within minutes. We've been using this unit for about three years, and while we primarily use it in our RV, we have actually taken it it to houses. We had it before we moved into our RV and we used it as basically an extra cooking surface, which was great. We've also taken it outside. We hooked it into the outlets outside and cooked breakfast outside on it. The unit is incredibly easy to clean up because this surface doesn't get super hot. Things will not burn onto it. So the glass has actually stayed really clean in the three years that we've owned it. And it seems to be very durable. This thing bounces around in storage and it has hasn't had any issues whatsoever. Personally, this is my favorite way to cook on induction, not necessarily this, but induction cooktops in general. I feel like it's a lot like cooking on gas. When you turn the power off, the heat is instantly gone. It doesn't have that residual heat that you get from a radiant style electric cooktop. There are a few drawbacks to this unit, however, uh, the first of which is it's a bit noisy. If I just turn it on right away here, You'll hear a fan kick on and it's, it's beeping right now because it's looking for a pot. If I take a pot and put it on there, you actually might hear a little bit of noise, kind of buzzing noise. That's something that it definitely is a little bit annoying. It really depends on the cookware as to what how much noise it makes, but it does make kind of a high pitch buzzing sound. And some cookware is a lot noisier than others. It probably has something to do with how the metal is laminated in there and what type it is. The auto pan detection can be a little bit annoying uh, when it's on and there's no pan on there. It reads EO and it beeps constantly, which is kind of annoying because uh, if you're cooking and you have the pan on there and you lift it off to do something for a minute, this thing's just gonna keep on beeping and it will actually shut down automatically after 60 seconds of beeping like this. Another drawback is the fan actually stays on for about a minute after you shut it off to help cool down the electronics inside it. Eh, it's not a big drawback, but it's a little bit extra noise. The fan draws air in on the bottom, pulls it through the electronics, and exhausts out the back side of the unit. The only problem that we've had with this unit is that running it on high for a very long time, we have actually had it overheat. It will actually display an air on the screen and just beep until it cools down enough or you unplug the unit and restart it. That was using a really large pan and running it on a very high setting for a while, but that has been very infrequently that we've actually seen that happen. This particular model is probably a little bit thick too. It's a little bit tall, um, which isn't necessarily a big drawback. It takes up a little bit more space in storage, and because it sits uh, a little higher off the counter, there's just a little more distance that something could fall off of it. In my testing of its power usage, I also noticed that this unit draws about 10 to 15 watts at idle when it's just plugged in, which I definitely find a drawback because um, it's not something that you want to leave plugged in all the time, especially if you're running an off-grid solar system or something like that where you really need to conserve energy. Lastly, in the three years that we've owned it, um, I think we had one pan get really hot and actually touch the bottom part, which is plastic down here, and there's a little tiny bit of deformation that you can see from where that hot pan touched it. So having this uh, flush, it's all flat, 
flush with the cook surface is kind of a bit of a drawback because you don't want a really searing hot pan to accidentally touch these plastic parts down here. Overall, we love the portability of it. It's lightweight, it's relatively durable, and it's easy to store. And it's definitely one of our most used kitchen appliances. Overall, I think this is a very cost-effective, great portable electric cooking solution. This has been my review and thoughts on the Ductstop 1800MC portable induction cooktop. Thanks for watching Road Gear Reviews, and we'll see you next time. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Also be sure to subscribe to our channel for weekly uploads of our travel product reviews.